You know, the party is on when Leonard is in the house and Leonard was definitely in the house at IoT Stars when the, we were doing this live streaming at Embedded World in Anaheim recently. Leonard is an analyst. Next Curve uh, is his company. You will find a lot of information on his channels, LinkedIn and others. He also runs the IoT Coffee Talk with Rob Tiffany that I uh, attend to sometimes. Really interesting conversations around IoT. I really recommend you check it out as well. Uh, and uh, well, Leonard has lots to say, and it's always fascinating to have a conversation and start him on some ideas. AGI, how are things going there and what's the trend there? So I really enjoyed the conversation with him. I hope you'll enjoy it as well here on the IoT Show. If you like the episode, do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Give us a like, put a little comment down there. And once again, thank you, IoT Stars, for supporting the IoT Show. IoT Stars is the IoT networking event you want to attend. Uh, if you are remotely interested in IoT or have an IoT project and want to meet the right person, have the right conversation that happens at IoT Stars events. Okay. okay. And we're oh back. my God, I look terrible. <laughs> That's Holy the crap. lights, man. I know. Turn off, Turn off the lights. Turn off the lights. <laughs> No, we look good, man. We look good. Oh, my God. Well, we are live. We have three people online. Thanks for joining in. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Leonard is here. The Leonard. As oh, usual with Leonard, we don't know what we're going to talk about. I have no idea. But, but that's going to be fun. Yeah, we yeah. are at uh, Embedded World. Yeah. It is the IoT Star Networking event. Yes. Great people waiting for us. You know, holding yeah. our beers down there. Yes. What's going on, Leonard? Um, <laughs> a, a, lo a lot of traffic. A lot of traffic. Yeah, I just got up here from uh, San Diego. Okay. Yeah, I was at a Cisco event, and so it was all about networking and security and all this AI supercomputing nonsense. <laughs> and then uh, now I'm here. With, with yeah, yeah it's all about embedded real. in IoT, the stuff that matters. Actually, yeah. what... I think it's going to become super sexy. So. Well, jokes aside, don't you feel like conversation? Wait, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> what makes you think I was joking? <laughs> Do I and look like that's actually, I'm joking? Uh, well, let me actually rephrase. This was not a joke. Here we are having a real conversation about real oh, stuff, yeah. right? Oh yeah. More <laughs> so than in other networking events, what not? Oh yeah. Networks. yeah. Say politely, right? Yeah. So, what are the things that you're you're observing the trends of the industry? You're actually advising companies, yeah. helping them understand what's next. Right? Next curve is the end of the company. Wow! Wow! Am I good? Am I good? Yeah, you're you're making me look a lot smarter than I really am. No, you are. You are. <laughs> the idea is to be smarter than the average of the uh, group. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's, if you call your company Next Curve. Yeah, you you're, you're kind of obligating yourself. Yes, right? you have a to be, bit. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. So tell me, let's narrow the conversation down. IoT AI. <laughs> okay. But in a concrete way. Yeah. How are things changing and how fast are they changing when it comes to that combination of these two technologies, the two words? No, I think it's important. There's like two things there's IoT. For AI, and then there's AI for IoT. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean that sounds kind of cliche, but that is sort of the dynamic that's playing out, okay. right? Because what we're seeing is a lot of this wonderful AI technology, largely uh, machine learning, that's benefiting from much more capable compute that's coming down literally to the microcontroller, and so you're able to deploy much more capable, a quote unquote AI closer to the sensor, yeah, closer yeah. to uh, the endpoint device, and so uh, that I think that's a that's a really uh, catalyzing dynamic, or at least one aspect of yeah. a catalytic dynamic that we're seeing right now. And the other one is IoT for AI. And so one of the things that I think is going to be pretty huge uh, very soon, in fact, I would say that it's happening right now, is contextual computing. 
contextual, and you know, some people call it contextual AI, but it really is more like contextual computing. How do we uh, enable AI to contextualize what is being sensed and gathered from environments, right? Yeah, yeah, Business yeah. environments or whatever kind of environment um, that are being captured by sensors. And then all the, you know, connectivities, uh, architectures and technology that are able, that allow you to aggregate all that stuff, you know, um, align it to an ontology that makes it machine readable. Once it's machine readable, of course, you can, you know, go through a contextualization layer that allows humans to understand in a much more yeah. rich way what's going on. And that's that's really what, like, you know, Rob Tiffany always talks about it. It's about the clipboard, right? Yes. You know, it, it, you get rid of the clipboard and it's not just about little data points, simple stuff. Now you're able to bring together a much richer collection of information yeah. together from the edge uh, and um, do some really funky stuff. Yeah, of things that we thought possible but didn't know how to do. Yeah. Now we have different technologies and bricks coming together. Digital twins that it allow yeah. to to model and contextualize IoT that is feeding environmental data, AI that yeah. analyzes all of that. Yeah, we just talked about software defined connectivity. For someone yeah. else here in the show. <laughs> but yeah, all these things are coming together. Yeah, it's kind of magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cr I mean, you know, I, I think. I want to give a kudos to a lot of engineers out there. Yeah, I love you guys, right? Mad respect for all of you. Um, I, I really appreciate everything that you guys do. And a lot of like the challenges you face working with these technologies and trying to express them in terms of, you know, the business value that all these ridiculous, uh, you know, forecasts of <laughs> exponential TAMs and all that stuff uh, suggested. But the thing is, uh, you guys knew. The thing is, is now technologies are hitting inflection points that allow what you thought would uh, wanted to happen to happen, right? And so there's this new value opportunities that are availing themselves. And I think, um, you know, fine, uh, you know, what is it? You know, we've been like kind of in the trough of disillusionment with IoT. Yeah. I mean, I really do think that IoT is going to get a second win. Right. And so embedded technologies, again, are going to have yeah. now a different role when you look at it in, ter in terms of like a cyber physical system and what you can do with those things and what kind of applications you can yeah. enable. Right. And um, I think it's the beer talking now. No, no, you want I think to shut me up? I think, I th no, no, not yet. Not yet. Am I sounding too smart? I think you're sounding, not only are you sounding smart, but that makes me want to to the follow. Oh, no. IoT okay. stars 2030. Ah. Where are we going to talk to you? I'm seeing a trend where there's consolidation of different types of stacks out there. So Qualcomm acquired Edge Impulse, Foundries, Arduino. They're, they're kind of consolidating. Nordic Semiconductor, they acquired Newton, which is like no. a tiny amount of technology as well. We're starting to see consolidation. Yeah. Tying AI at the edge with IoT and cloud yeah. and hardware. So, IoT stars 2030. Who's going to be in the room? <laughs> what are we going to talk about? Yeah, it's really an interesting question. I mean, I think that's a really good observation because I think con consolidation makes sense, uh, provided that there is scale that could benefit from it, right? And um, at, at this point, I think we're really looking at an effort to simplify things and seek scale. So, yeah, I, I think, um, I don't think there's any, it, it's inevitable that you're going to have some consolidation, integration, in order to squeeze out costs, yeah, yeah. right? And to be able to allow uh, applications to be viable. I mean, that was like one of the biggest challenges we had in IoT for more than a decade is viability. It's great in terms of like, uh, you know, a technical capability, but 
was it viable, right? Yeah. From an economic standpoint. And so, yeah, you're going to, you're going to probably see a lot of the, um, I mean, you do see a lot of the semiconductor companies, whether it's SD micro or it's, uh, I mean, even the analog devices, Qualcomm, NXP, all these guys now yeah. trying to, yeah. to bring this stack together. Yeah. NVIDIA, yeah. um, arguably, you know, AMD, all the guys, right. Yeah. And, uh, Intel, right. Trying to create these, um, let's call them value pipelines, right. And that involves simplification. It involves integration. And uh, it, a lot of that has to do with, you know, kind of bringing IoT together yeah. with AI pipelines. And so that's what we're seeing with some of these um, uh, plays, yeah. right? Where and, um, and they're much needed because, like, all these yeah. technologies are very complex. Integrating them is not simple. Yeah. Now you'll get options out there. The yeah. same way cloud simplified yeah. things. You can go to AWS and things are done a certain way. You go to Azure, things are done a different way. So you basically get you know options that simplify this aggregation of yeah. technologies yeah. to implement your solutions. I think Mark is like hovering there. Oh my god. <laughs> are you gonna actually be surprised? I got the door. Yeah, I didn't see him joining. I oh my god! What, what, how, how did you get in here? Uh, you know, somebody, uh, Brandon recognized me, and then he goes, "Oh yeah, Leonard Lee." We had, we had, you need to talk. Yeah, we have special <laughs> instruction though. For not letting <laughs> him in. It's like, yeah, look, look, yeah, look out for that crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, guys, so we were yeah. in a very profound conversation oh, oh. about the trends. You know, of IoT and, and consolidation of stacks, IoT, AI, hardware, and so on. Yeah. I, you know, you, you joined Qualcomm recently. Yeah. And so, Qualcomm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Consolidation. But yeah, no, that's that's fascinating. Yeah, I mean, but I, I, I think um, it, it, it's something that is inevitable. Uh, it's not something that I think developers really need to be, have too much angst. For because there are going to be, there are going to be stovepipes. There are going to be like competitive stovepipes, and so uh, and then openness. Openness is it's great, but it has to come. It has to drive valuable interoperability, and it's really more of an agenda of interoperability more than open. Right? I mean, we've seen this time and time again. Don't overdo the open thing what's most important for a de developer community is being able to channel technology applications into end market value right and that again going back to you know some of the fixations we had with iot in the first um, you know first or second round is hey it has to be open it has to be we have to be interoperable in order to scale well a lot of those theories didn't play out and so you know um one of the things that I would highly recommend both the edge AI community and the IOT community and the combined IOT plus <laughs> edge AI community is, you know, uh, don't get too fixated on that stuff. Don't get yeah. religious about things, right? We really have to focus on how do we move the community? How do we then support the technology to, I feel like the beer is in. No, but <laughs> you think, you think. maybe I should drink more beer. But uh, how do you get? How do you create that dynamic that that uh, channels that technology into those applications? And scaling is like you know we've talked about our IoT coffee talk forever. Scaling is a weird concept. Yes. You have to be very clear on what you mean by that, because scaling in one context is different from another. And the strategies that you come up with related to driving scaling, whether it's for your business or it's for the technology or the service, those are different. They're not the same, right? And so you can't generalize things like that. So hopefully, a lot of these things that we've learned in IoT, we, um, we um, apply them, you know, the lessons learned in this next round, this next opportunity, I, you know, as a, uh, as, um, 
some encouragement to the community. Yes, there is a new opportunity here, and there are high value uh, opportunities in you know some you know industries that have a crap ton of money, like the semiconductor industry right now. You know, and so you know those of you who follow me know that I do a lot of stuff in the semiconductor mm -hmm. industry. Man, you can use the answer for this question. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> we have some coasters at uh, the IoT stars, and one says. If your if your technology has a steep learning curve, it's a bad product. So <laughs> probably this is a, like the conclusion of uh, the summary. Of what you say? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Ah. So some good timing. Yeah. Thanks, man. Anna, there is no such thing as the shell hardware. Everything ends up custom. Yeah, I think. No, I, I I agree. A lot a lot of it becomes bespoke. Yeah. And uh, you will love this one. The best dashboard is no dashboard. It's automation that matters. Well, some philosopher has been writing this. Oh, wow. So now here's the question. Things up. Who, who created this? It does. <laughs> it's Lawrence and me. Oh my God. The key to edge AI adoption is better developer experience. What do you think is the key for edge yeah. AI adoption? Um, yeah. I mean, that's definitely, you know, it's greasing the wheel. But, you know, again, it has to be direction. You have to be go moving in the right direction. A modern embedded stack is unlocked to any hardware platform. What? <laughs> a modern embedded stack is unlocked to any hardware platform. So that one, that oh, one, we that. need to <laughs> we need to triple click on that one. That's, that's, that's like gonna be you. Yeah, and, that, and that's gonna be for a an IoT coffee talk. Yeah. Right. You will love this one. The last one. The only reason you need five G is because you didn't optimize your system with HAI. <laughs> Okay. Oh my God! So that one—that one—you were—you were. I think you were smoking something when you came up with that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know. Yes and no. It's complicated. I think that's our wrap. Yeah. Coming yeah. <laughs> up on this quote, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. IoT Stars. Thanks for hosting us. And uh, well, yeah. awesome. I'll see you soon, guys. Thanks. Yeah. Bye bye.